It's a lovely afternoon here in Clemson, South Carolina, as March Madness grows ever closer in the ACC. Today, the Clemson Tigers are looking for their second upset of a top five team this season as the fifth-ranked Louisville Cardinals come to Little John Coliseum looking to keep their place atop the ACC. The dominant story this season in the ACC has been the rise of the Louisville Cardinals, who sit atop the standings in their second year under Chris Mack. Johnson with a two-handed slam. Jordan Wara, another long three, and he just can't miss. And yeah, a great post feed just stuffed it. Ahead of the pack is Williams, and Louisville's going to win it here at Cameron. Today, Louisville travels south to face a Clemson Tiger squad that has already proven to have a flair for the dramatic and the ability to stare down a top ten foe. Jim spinning and hit Clemson picks down to... Will the Cardinals be able to keep their perch atop the ACC, or will the Tigers play the spoiler once again? We'll find out as our basketball doubleheader tips off Action-packed afternoon in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Well, thanks for being with us today at Little John Coliseum, everybody. Dave O'Brien alongside Jordan Cornette, Katie George in just a moment. Nice to have you along. And Jordan, for the Louisville Cardinals, they started this week and came into the day with a half-game lead in the ACC over the Duke Blue Devils, but earlier this week, they stumbled in a major way against Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Yeah, there's an evident nonchalance to Louisville as they arrived in there to play a very heady, tough-minded Georgia Tech team. Because they came in lacking that edge, it cost them the game. They need to come out here and be ready to play. You're not going to be gifted road wins in this conference. And that edge, that laser focus, well, it begins with Jordan Wara. He is their star without question. And it was evident that his focus was lacking versus Georgia Tech. Offensively, one of six from the field, couldn't get that offense going. And because it wasn't going offensively, he was not as focused as disciplined and gave the effort needed defensively. Here, beat on the back door, cut from Jordan Usher. He became a liability during stretches of that game. Because so, Coach Mack had to take him out for a spell. Brings him in for the end game for his offense and his big shot ability. Here, he's due to hit the ball screen on Kimball but doesn't really possess the effort and demand in wanting the ball. Kimball then drives it, turns it over. Consequently, Louisville loses the game. Coach Mack left scratching his head. The performance must be different out of the gates here, OB, without question, if they want to win. Yeah, just two points. That's a season low for the Louisville star against Georgia Tech. One for six from the field, 0 for four from three. And he is not in the starting lineup today. Here against the Clemson Tigers for the first time this season there's a whole lot going on here on the campus at Clemson there's about 17 track and field teams here performing they've got softball they've got baseball and of course also a big college basketball game here at Little John yeah the last time that a uh, opponent like this showed up in Little John it was Duke and the Clemson faithful are very aware of how that game played out. They were able to use the sixth man in the stands to get them hype enough to come out there and pull the upset. They got a real opportunity this afternoon. Well, you know, it's been an up and down season for Clemson. And for more on the Tigers, let's bring in Katie George. Well, guys, Clemson has a whole lot of confidence coming into this game, and rightfully so. They just got their biggest ACC win of the season on the road at Pittsburgh on Wednesday night. They got hot from behind the arc, hitting 13 of 22 three-pointers. And the team was led by freshman guard Al Amir Dawes, who finished with 18 points and a couple of clutch finishes down the stretch. Players say they recognize that a flat start and a couple of early threes in front of their home crowd is a solid blueprint for how to upset the fifth-ranked Cardinals. Jordan? Well, Dawes is a freshman who, at this point in the season, those guys become sophomores with the minutes that they've logged. They're going to lean on Dawes immensely in this one and hope and pray that that three-point line that was so good to them on the road first pit, that momentum carries over here. Conversely, Clemson faithful are hoping that the performance from from this Louisville team in Atlanta versus Georgia Tech comes here as well. It's going to be interesting, but I'll tell you, OB, I am laser-focused on the start for both of these teams. Well, FSU has already held off a very good Syracuse team. A game that was decided at the buzzer on a missed three by Syracuse. It would have tied the ball game and sent it into overtime. So FSU putting some heat on the two teams in front of them. 
in the ACC, the Louisville Cardinals and the Duke Blue Devils. Clemson coming in at 12 and 12, 6 and 8 in the conference. Louisville number five in the country, 21 and 4, 12 and 2, and the lead in the ACC, and they win the opening tip. Well, they met a few weeks ago at KFC Young Center. The Cardinals ran away with it. They sizzled in the first half. They made 66% of their shots. They won that game 80-62. to 62. And they really guarded, dictated the pace, played fast. Arguably the best performance of the season for 40 minutes. Blue. Perry with the turnover, picked off by Sims, the 6'8 junior. So a quick turnover here for the Tigers. That could be a huge factor today. Live ball turnovers, a place where the Clemson defense thrives. Draws with the kick. Here's Trapp the first one. He'll knock it down. Clyde Trapp, 6 for sophomore from East over South Carolina to get the Tigers on the board. Led the Clemson scores in the first matchup versus Louisville, so has some confidence there. Ripping those elbows. Enoch back up top for Sutton. And here's Kimball with it. Who committed that turnover in the final seconds the other night. Long jumper on the way. Perry and nothing but net. Well, he makes 41 percent. Yeah, Darius Perry, 19 points versus Clemson in that last matchup. He's a guy that's capable of banging down that three-point shot, and when he does, immensely dangerous. Well, he made the first five in that game you talked about the first time they met. That's a sweet touch. Sims. His game of the year came in the upset of Duke. He had 25 points, nine rebounds, five assists in that game. And he's going to challenge Enoch to guard him out there, even as much as 12 feet out. When he catches, you got to be up in. Suck clips it up there. Very good shooting team. Louisville loves it from beyond the three-point line where they're 39%, but they can get in that paint, too. Dawes on the wing. Very capable of an explosive game. He's just coming back. Big tough drive there. Nicely done by Newman. Too easy. Newman with that dominant left hand. Got Williamson on the hip. Had him beat from jump. Suck straight on. Can't connect. Newman got knocked to the floor. And a foul on the play. Talking about Amir Sims returning from the flu. Did a real job on him, too. Yeah, and if he's there versus Notre Dame on this floor, he's probably the difference, and that's a win going Clemson's way. Uh, he's the most unique piece on this Tigers floor in uniform. So they've got to establish him early and often, truly challenge Enoch to defend. Moving straight on. Yes! For the triple. Trust me when I tell you, they're not a good three-point shooting team. But they're getting off to a good start, and they were red hot last time on the floor. An amazing performance when they hit 13 of them. And don't tell them they're not a three-point shooting team, OB, because 47% of their shots are taken from beyond the arc, so they're stubborn. Yeah, just 32% for the season, but lately much better than that. And a steal by Dawes to trigger a fast break. Trap thought about the three. Clemson off to a really nice start in the opening moments. Sims puts it to the deck. Nifty pass. Here's Matt. Got it! Well, they can't miss suddenly from three-point land. Tigers on top. Coach Mack wants a timeout. Timeout Louisville. Job one. Try to figure out why they're hitting these three pointers. Tigers lead it 12 to 5. Well, the Tigers just beat Pittsburgh on the road by 20. One of their best wins of the season. Clemson not usually strong from there, but 13 out of 21 from three in that one. And they do unique things off the ball screen. Sim slips it, then becomes a driver, which allows him to kick out to Mack. It's a high percentage opportunity for a low percentage shooting team that plays to their favor. Look, they shoot it well here. They don't have a lot of firepower, but they get up for the big ones. They're locked in and ready to play. Louisville must match that intensity. Well, they don't look like the number 10 team in three-point shooting in the ACC so far. And in their last couple of games, Wara in the game. Jordan Wara 
the ACC Player of the Year candidate. Shot clock a factor. It's down to three. They fumble it. Kimball's got to get it in the air. Certainly not the shot they wanted. Clemson's out here guarding early. Heavy with the ball pressure. Have forced a couple live ball turnovers to their benefit as well. The Tigers with an eight-zip run. Very sharp right away. Sims on the high post. Trap trying to penetrate. Shut down. Shot clock to nine. Here's Sims again. Wants it close with a hook. That won't drop for him. Malik Williams with the show of good defense there, making a meet of chess. Their best, most consistent guy, consistent on both sides of the ball during this stretch of basketball. On the baseline, Dawes. Back up top for Trap for the three. And missing one. Tigers lost three starters to injuries at one point this season. They expected to be in much better shape in the ACC by this point in the season. At least they did. Williamson shot rejected out of the sky. 15.08 to go here in the first half. Newman off to a really nice start. AOB, let me tell you, Clemson came to play on their home floor using the three-point line to their advantage. It's the lucky lefty, Newman. ACC Network Basketball is brought to you by Zaxby's. Hand-breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. Well, the first time they met this season, Louisville had a 20-0 run. They put that game on ice very quickly. The final score was 80-62 to with KFC Yumpson. And OB Louisville was locked in from tip-off until closing time in that game. Jordan Warren, not a big scoring output in that one, but it was the combined balance that overwhelmed the Clemson Tigers, allowing Louisville to pull one out with ease. Holding Sims and Mack to four for 20. This Tiger team has come out roaring today in front of their home crowd, which is really filled in. I mean, there are thousands of sports fans, many thousands of sports fans on this campus throughout the weekend for all sorts of events. Williams a little fall away short. Tigers, as we mentioned, have been very up and down. They had a five-game winning streak early in the season. That was followed by a four-game losing skid. They just broke a three-game slide with that victory at Pitt. Backing down, Sims in close for the hook. Sims needs to have an impact on every play in the half-court setting, whether it's the ball screen, a low post touch, a dynamic, versatile piece on the offensive side. Put a lot of pressure on this Cardinals defense. Kick out top here for Sutton. Shot clock to 10. Too much dribbling. Not enough movement. Four up. A three short. We've seen that a lot with the Cardinals. The shots are just getting to the iron. Need more movement, more passing, more cutters, more screeners. Too easy def to defend in that sequence. Here's Mack way downtown. And rebounded away by Malik Williams. He gets about six per game for Chris Mack. Wara, number one scorer in the ACC. Coming off the bench today. He'll throw it away. Picked off by Trap. On the attack, he'll lay it in. Everything is going the Tigers' way right now. The live ball turnover is costly. Telegraphing the pass after being a ball stopper was Wara there. Giving this defense an opportunity, and the Tigers take full advantage. Cardinals need a spark. Will it come from the freshman, David Johnson, who's done that a couple of times this year, including a 19-point game at Duke. Another turnover. That's four of them already. Newman... They'll draw the foul with 13.06 left in the half. And, and let me show you, this is the laser focus that Wara is lacking. Dribbling, dribbling, easy to guard. Then a cross-court telegraph pass that Clyde Trapp's able to get into that lane and translate it to offense going the other way. It's a defunct team in a half-court setting, scoring-wise for the Tigers. You cannot allow them that confidence to get easy ones in the open floor. Let's go to Katie George. 
Well, Chris Mack is not going to be happy with those last four empty possessions. He originally drew up a play coming out of the timeout to get the ball inside to Malik Williams. He ended up shooting a jumper and missing, but they want to try to get the ball inside. They feel like that presence is non-existent at the moment, so look for them to do that moving forward, guys. And, and Katie, I would have assumed as much given the fact that there's a distinct advantage for the Cardinals on the inside. A place where the Clemson team coming into this one, especially Coach Brad Brunel, were concerned rebounding and scoring on the interior could they match that well right now they haven't had to because the cards haven't established that well the drop for louisville is over five minutes on a 13 to nothing run by the tigers needing something good to happen williams in the paint doubled up short a battle for the rebound of course the tigers come away with it and that's the way the first half has unfolded here 18 to 5. I love the aggressive nature with Williams trying to get one off there, but he had a double team and an open guy and Sutton on the baseline. Got to make it easy. Mack will back it out. Call for play. Eight to get off a shot. Moore, a determined drive, a spin. Left it well short, and it's going to roll out of bounds. Good discipline defense from Sutton. Didn't get drawn up in the air on a head fake. Didn't foul. Stayed in front, defended, and gave his team the opportunity to get the ball back. Chris Mack, this is Louisville's best record for 14 games in the ACC in six years at 12 and 2, but his team has already stumbled on the road once this week. McMahon with the three, no. That certainly is his stock and trade. They're going to keep it here on the possession that goes out off of the Tigers. 11.57 to go in the half. Back here, and Little John and Clemson has come out hot, executing at the highest order for the three-point line. Sims on a dribble drive, defense nowhere in sight. Tevin Mack makes a pay, two of four from distance, and then the live ball turnover as Louisville careless with it. Wara allows that Tigers defense to get out nine points off turnovers for Clemson. It's all coming into, into place for them here currently. Yep, 14 nothing run. Cardinals made their first couple of shots, but not made one since. Old for their last nine, and the Tigers have made seven out of 11 to build up the early advantage. Three Slurpees for everybody. Never a bad thing. Sutton will swing it. Johnson a good fake. Sutton the open shooter from three, and all net with the triple. But that's in rhythm. It was a couple, just one simple probing dribble to make the defense commit. Then sharing it, allowing Sutton to step in in rhythm to knock down the shot. A good shot, not a rush shot. Mm -hmm. Back a shovel up there, got in that lane and knocks down another one. But that's going back to Louisville offensively. That's what you've seen here in the first nine minutes of the game is poor shot selection. They've been settling for opportunities that are low percentage opportunities. Scott with a hand check, he'll pick up the foul. Let's go to Katie. Dave Jordan, Brad Brown now was all over his reserves in that last timeout. He said, you are not going to play in this game if you're not playing at the level of our starters. So clearly he's happy with the first punch that was thrown, but he wants his guys to sustain it when he's putting his starters on the bench to get a blow. He also said on the offensive end, we have to be quicker with our ball reversal. He doesn't like the ball movement at the moment. He's got Hunter Tyson in the ball game. He has Curran Scott in the ball game. Couple of reserves. McMahon with a quick trigger. Rebound tip. And that time they out hustle the Cardinals. 50 50 balls will most likely play a role in this one with how Clemson started. They don't seem like they're going to go away lightly on their home floor, not in front of this crowd. Sims will kick it up top. Here's Tyson. Can't bury that three. He's a guy like a lot of his teammates. He has shown the ability to impact the game. He had 21 against Wake Forest. Hit a big clutch three and a huge victory over North Carolina. Big because they had never won at Chapel Hill before that win. Yeah, huge. Although what a strange and tough season it's been for the Tar Heels. So unusual to see that. And before that jump shot, a foul with 10.15 to go. That was beyond Sims. He'll pick up number one on Amir Sims. But OB, you mentioned that North Carolina win for Brownell's squad, and that was a huge three-game stretch in which they saw themselves beat the Wolfpack, beat the Tar Heels, and beat Duke to give them a little bit of juice. And in those games, John Newman played a big role, 
notching double figures in all three. Here today versus Louisville, he's come out of the gates, knocking down shots, and he forces a turnover here. He'll drive it, got airborne, took the hit, he'll be at the line. John Newman, the sophomore, yet another turnover. He's at 71%. Hey, Tuesday night, we're going to be in Tallahassee for number eight, Florida State, taking on Pitt at 8 Eastern right here on the ACC Network. Nice win for FSU today, fighting back a game Syracuse team. Three-point win for FSU. The Panthers have won four of five, 14 and four all-time against the Knolls. Good luck beating that team at home. Once again, the Seminole team that comes at you in waves. Yeah, they do. And they can shoot it. They can really shoot it. Uh, so much talent, interchangeable pieces defensively, so they switch everything, giving no real opportunities or gaps to the rim. But Elijah Hughes had one from nearly half court, got his feet set, and I thought they were going to force overtime today down there in talent. Yes, that shot coming off his hand looked like it was going down. Yeah. Even though it was from about 40 feet. <laughs> but somehow... It's still a good shot, you feel like. Yes. Enoch. Enoch's got to do something. A lot of contact. Going belly to belly, but that one's going to be off target. The tip won't go down either. Here comes Trap out of the back. Now you want chest, 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 but then you fade it. Go into the contact. Put the pressure on the official to blow that whistle and earn him from the free throw line. Trap around the back. Barry zips it ahead. And stepping right into the shot. Burying that is Dwayne Sutton. Hey, That's what you need. Pick the pace up. Control the pace of this game. Speed this thing up. Make Clemson run with you. Make this game be one in the 70s and 80s. Are you confident that the Tigers can get there? Speed History it up. shows that they can't. Can the game go any quicker than it is? Yeah, they need to get stops, this Louisville team. Then they got to get out and run. Phil Lanes pursue that early offense. Sutton quietly with eight. Scott lost it. Trying to do a little too much, perhaps. They've got a three on one. Perry in the corner. Clemson got back. McMahon fires it up there with three. He's trying to draw contact, and he airmailed it. 22 to 11. And he's hearing it from the faithful Bad Little John. Yeah, they're trying to speed it up right here. Here's a stop. Perry gets that thing, pushes. And then that initial thrust, you've got McMahon running. Had a good one. Saw a great one in Sutton. Knocks it down. Going back to the last possession. Reason to believe McMahon, when he had that defender in the air, that momentum was going to come into him. He was going to draw the foul and get three shots. So it looked erratic, but you know what the shooter was thinking there. Just great control from Scott, not the foul. That is an outstanding three-point shooter. He makes 44%. Beyond that line. Turning and firing. Tyson, another one that doesn't touch anything. 8.15 to go here in the first half. And for the most part, it has been all Tigers as they try and pick up their seventh win in the ACC and knock off the number five team in the country. Thirteen seconds on the shot clock here for the Tigers. Nicely run play there for Hemingway. The 6'3 freshman will bury that. Hemingway is a shooter. He's taken a lot of those minutes from Scott. 16 versus Notre Dame. Hit a couple versus Pitt. He's become a confident shooter as of late. Perry trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. He's denied. He'll pull up. That won't drop for him. One and done for the Cardinals. Trap directing traffic. Shot clock to 15. Corner jumper. Tyson. And a lot of iron. Looked like it was going down. And that is getting everything but the ball to go in the basket. 24-11 Tigers. Williamson gives it up. Coming up in the seven-minute mark. Now the first half that has flown by. Williamson airborne. Partially tipped on the baseline. A turnaround by Sutton won't drop. Comes free in the corner and the Tigers have it. Well, the crowd here is loving the effort. 
starts without Jemison's competing on that backboard with Sims out of the lineup right now. Really neutralizing the trenches. Short jumper off the mark. Tell you what, Alex Hemingway, the freshman, is not afraid to shoot the basketball. He shoots it with a lot of confidence. Enoch went up, and he is slammed from behind. He'll be at the line to shoot two. Twenty-four to eleven. A young man in his jumper coming off the screen. Hemingway gets it to go from the baseline. All Clemson early. The performance versus uh, Georgia Tech less than savory, and it's carried over today from Jordan Wara. Doesn't seem to have that edge once again. Too much dribbling has allowed this defense to really hone in on him and ultimately generate what has been now three tally turnovers for Wara. Not his best showing here in the response from that Georgia Tech game that was a forgettable one. Season low, two points in that one. Did not start today for the first time. We're not just talking about another player. We're talking about the guy who had a couple of articles this week about the ACC, was ranked as the leader for ACC Player of the Year. He has not scored in this one. Yeah, and this is, could be a stretch of basketball. Look, it's the last thing that Cardinals fans care about, but if you are talking about Player of the Year, I mean, Vernon Carey and Trey Jones have a chance to separate themselves depending on what you see here down the home stretch from Jordan War. I mean, the guy's a star, but he has to simplify the game. He's not a creator that's just going to break down a guy off the dribble and get his. It comes within the flow. Move the basketball, welcome it to come back to you. Good things will happen. At 37 points against Boston College, let's toss it to Katie. Well, earlier on, Louisville wanted to go inside more, and Clemson then went zone. So now, in the huddle, they're talking about flat ball screens. Not on the sidelines, but more in the middle. They want to go flat ball screens, Jordan. Yeah, because they want to attack that zone. You get into the paint, it collapses it. Then you allow one of the best shooting teams in the conference to get clean, in-rhythm looks. But it starts with those guards and being aggressive in attacking. On the line, and the Tigers turn it over. Only three turnovers. They've had a pretty clean half. Yeah, absolutely. And it's allowed them an opportunity to get good looks and to, to generate some momentum and a rhythm in their own right. Kemble trying to get this offense rolling. Here's Wara. That's going to roll out. And a foul there with 6.07 to go. They'll go on Tevin Mack of the Tigers. So he picks up the personal. Grant Brunel in his 10th year at the helm for the Tigers. He took them to the Sweet 16 just a couple of years ago. 20 wins last season. This one has been a real challenge. A lot of help on the way for next year for the Tigers. Kimball. Kimball will pull up and pop. And it's in and out. And Lobo started two for two. They are two for their last 20. Sim looking to create. Take some contact. Left it way short. And no whistle on the play. You got to get some inside. I, I, you got to establish Enoch here. Play inside out. You got man defense right now currently. Challenge Sims to guard on the interior. Not even looking at Enoch. Curry, tough drive and foul before the shot. 5.23 to go in the half. That's Thursday night, a women's basketball doubleheader. Syracuse hosting Clemson at the Carrier Dome at 6 Eastern. And number four, NC State at Coral Gables to take on Miami. The Wolfpack tied for first in the ACC, along with Louisville. Cardinals men's and women's teams, they get such great support in that city. Playing in, I'll tell you this, my favorite arena, KFC Young Center. Oh, yeah. It's a great sports town. They love their Cardinals, and they show up. They show up, and they show up loud. Not bad digs either there at the Young Center. Oh, sir. Yes. Shot clock down to six. Johnson in the paint. Another one short. Won it back. Tried to feed into the paint, but an errant toss and a scramble for that. Enoch took it away with strips. Or it can't hit. The follow won't go either. 
by Sutton, so nothing falling. And I think uh, Jordan Wara didn't know about the shot clock, had 13 seconds. Thought he was running out of time there, kind of forced one. Two for their last 23. Wow. Seven to get off the shot. Dawes with a determined dribble. It's great and, defense. Yeah, Sutton blocking that away. That triggers a break. The Tigers quickly get back on defense. Dimble over the top. Enoch with the hook. And lots of iron and off it comes. Took his dribble away too soon. Should have kept the dribble alive to bury trap even deeper. Probably could have been a dunk finish. Gotta say, I mean, the Tigers are playing terrific defense. Louisville's been unlucky. They've had a number of shots tantalizing, hanging on their rim that have not dropped in. And that was probably the best look they've had all day that they have been able to convert. Roman, oh, very nicely done on the baseline. He's really been in attack mode from the opening tip. Great body control to finish in traffic. Newman double figures for the first time since the Duke win on the 14th of January. He's been a real factor today. And that was that stretch of basketball where he put together those three double-figure games. All big conference wins for the Tigers. Johnson with the kick. Kimball. Shot clock to three. Down it goes. He hits a two-pointer. From the corner. 26 to 14. He labored for that one, though, didn't they? Yes. Nothing's come easy on that side. Credit the Tigers' defense. Back with a three. Yes! You know, he's only 29% out there. But he has just gone over 1,000 career points with that triple. We're all fight through the D. Back out for Johnson. Wants the paint, slamming on the brakes, battling for his own miss, but the Tigers win it again. It's been bend but don't break. The Tigers have given up a little bit on the drive, but at the moment where you absolutely got to contest to get the stop, they've delivered and then rebound. Shove there before the shot with 2.19 remaining in the half. He loves a big stage, doesn't he? The grad forward is back home. Tevin Mack, 33 versus Cues, 22 versus Duke. Big wins. He's looking for another big performance this afternoon. Nothing but net. Every Sunday is our weekly basketball studio show. Previewing the matchups ahead, look back at the best games from the week. Highlights, analysis, and more. Tomorrow's show at 8 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Tigers are shooting right at 50%. Louisville's been dismal today. They've missed 11 of their last 12, 3 for 12 from 3, and they are the number 8 team in America in three-point accuracy, 39%. Now, this is why I'm here to tell you that it's not all effort that's lacking from Louisville. Seven offensive rebounds for the cards just haven't converted. We see slow down, start with getting some stops on this side, try to push initially, and if not, run good offense to get good ones. Trap gets a good look, and a really good look, but misfires. So we'll see if a little door opens here for the Cardinals in the last two minutes of the half. Worth noting, they've gone big here. It'll be Williams and Enoch down there in the trenches. Look for them to make a statement on the low block. Kimball, the point guard. Johnson. Here's Kimball. Well short. Well, a lot of shots today for the Cardinals, which have barely gotten to the iron. And a timeout by the Tigers. Tiger. Tiger. Brownell taking one there with a minute 39 to go. I don't even know if they have possession to get a timeout right there. But well, that's exactly what Chris Mack <laughs> is saying. It. He is barking from his bench. Got to so possess they didn't have the ball it. to get that timeout, OB. That's how that thing works. Uh, Coach Mack not happy about that. Let's take a look. Offering from Kimball, which I didn't love. 50-50 ball. That looked like he had it. Okay, he's in there. Yeah, he did have it. Okay. A lot of bodies from where we are to see that. They know how to cover the ball in this neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah, I stand correct. Football team certainly can. Well, Louisville 
the fewest points in any half this season 24 against Kentucky and only 14 here today at Clemson now you've gone big now you have Enoch and you got Williams in there with the lineup out there for the Tigers that means Sims and Mack are tasked with guarding them well Mack's 6'6 so at 6'6 going against the size of 6'10 and 6'11 he should lose out you got to try and exploit Mack as an interior defender every time down here in the last 90 seconds. Been an outstanding half for Clemson in just about every phase of the game. Jumper on the way, and that's going to be short. Mack unable to hit. He had a 32-point game against Syracuse earlier this season. Also had... His best day ever shooting it, making 12 shots, so he can really get hot. Johnson with the kick. Here's Sutton. Rebound comes out high, an opportunity to move it. Trap with a bounce for Max. He'll lay it out. Beautifully run, fast break to make it 31 to 14. Johnson lifts. Nope. That missed ugly. Well, a very festive day here on the Clemson campus. So much going on with athletics. Great athletes all over the place. And the Tigers have been putting on maybe the biggest show all day here, leading 31 to 14 over the number five team in America. Shot clock to seven. Max jumper. Battle for the rebound. Sutton has it. Opportunity to get a shot in the air here before the end of the half for the Cardinals. The best playmaker Johnson with the ball here. Got to go. Sutton taking a look at the clock. A three. Around and out. Rebound tipped. Controlled by the Tigers. So is the first half. As they lead it 31 to 14. Fewest points and a half this season for the Cardinals. They have a lot to talk about as they march off to their locker room. Oh, B, that was a fitting finish to the first stanza. Just poor execution. Standing, standing, standing. Sutton with a poor offering. That's why you have 14 at the half. KD with Brad Brunel. Thanks, Dave. Brad, you said to win this game, you had to hit threes and score in the paint. What did you think of the execution that first half? Well, we didn't make a lot of threes, but uh, I thought our defense was tremendous. I think our kids are really competing. I think we're uh, doing a great job on the glass. And we're trying to score some in transition. If they're going to send three or four to the glass, we got to try to get some easy baskets. Thanks for the time. Thank you. You know, they made only three of ten from three-point land, but they hit them early. Yeah, they, they did what they the needed goal. to do. They really competed, OB. That was the difference in that first half. At the break, Clemson on top, 31-14 to 14 over Louisville. We'll be back with a halftime report after this break. Well, back here on the Clemson campus, how about this score? This is reverberating around the ACC at the moment. The Tigers, maybe their best half of the season. And this guy was a big part of it, Tevin Mack with 10 points. Newman also had 11 and did not miss a shot. He was three for three. And meanwhile, all sorts of struggles for Wara and the Cardinals. Too much dribbling, not enough movement. Got to get some stops, get out and run. Try to find some easy looks. Instead, they're giving it away. And this Clemson team taking full advantage of those live ball turnovers. Louisville in the first half, making only five of 32 shots. That is 16%. Yeah, and it's you got to figure out a way when the shots aren't falling. What are you going to be able to do? you got to get back out there, continue to guard, continue to look to run, and try and get easy ones. Let's go to Katie George. Chris, it's a decent hole to dig out of. What needs to change this I'm next sorry, half? I'm sorry. It's a decent hole to dig out of. What needs to change this next half? Well, we're going to have to do a much better job of making some shots and playing through their physicality. Clemson's doing a really good job of being physical in the half court like they always do. We just got to do a better job of playing through that physicality, knock some shots down. Turnovers hurt us early, although we didn't have a lot of them. You know, they scored off those opportunities. Our bench needs to do a little bit better job providing something. And what do you do to get Jordan going? Well, we're trying to get him some looks. It'd be nice if we get some stops and get out in transition. And uh, he just has to know when there's two guys on, you got to get the ball, get rid of the ball, and you know, we got to try to get try to free him up. Thank you, Dawes with the first shot of the second half and a miss for the Tigers. 
After not missing very many in the first 20 minutes, well, one of the things that Coach Mack has done to start get his star going is starting him in the second half. Wara did not start the game for the first time this season. He's on the floor to begin the second 20. Yeah, and Coach Mack, the thinking in the first half, not starting him, was try and send a message. We need more out of you to be on the floor. We've got nine guys that can play. If you're not going to give it, then somebody will replace you. But that didn't light the fire that was hoped. It's almost like Wara got even more inside his head. So Coach is now electing to get him out there, get him involved right away, and see if that will get a more productive effort from number 33. Fresh Kimball back up top for Malik Williams, also in the starting lineup in the second half. they got to get a shot in the air. That one forced up there. And short by Perry. And a collision and a foul against the Tigers. That'll go against Kevin Mack. That's huge. Not the foul, not the miss. The effort from Jordan Wara. The desire to go get the basketball, to make something happen. Now you hope your star builds off of that. But the fact that he's focused to go get it is a stepping block. Zipped in for Williams off the fake through the contact. And a foul on the deck. It's uh, the first minute of the second half that will go on Amir Sim. This is second. Coach Max said it to Katie coming out of the, to start this second half. It really resonated with me. It's that physicality. Clemson punched Louisville in the mouth. And they didn't really hit one back. Now you got 20 minutes to do so. Coming out here in the first few minutes, be very talented. Sutton in traffic, tipped away. He reached in, he commits the foul. Points in the paint. Under the game trend here, Clemson is 12, Louisville only two so far. And that is the head scratcher, because I thought that would be the number that goes the other way with the size and the skill inside of the cards. Let's bring in Katie George. Well, I thought Ryan McMahon had an interesting take on these slow starts. He said, I don't think we realize we're a top five team. It's like we're surprised every time an opponent throws that first punch or plays their best basketball. I asked him if the Georgia Tech loss was a learning lesson for Margie. He said, they're all learning lessons, but I don't want to learn a lesson at the expense of an ACC championship. And I like the focus from one of your upperclassmen that plays such a big role for this team. Strong effort by Sims in close to make it 33 to 14. And another whistle, a flurry of those here. And that's going to be on Sims. Crowd doesn't like it, but that is his third. That's huge. Now, Sims hasn't been lighting it up in this game, but his skill set, you can use him so many different ways to provide offense, whether it's the dribble drive, making the extra pass, rebounding, most certainly defending. Now Jemison, a seldomly used sophomore big, has to go against Malik Williams down low. That's advantage Williams. He is big at seven feet. Perry airborne, nice touch Perry off the window. Not dropping names here. I ran into Bill Murray, the great actor and comedian at halftime. Let me pick that up for you. His son, Luke, is an assistant coach for the Louisville Cardinals. We are talking about the first half. I said it might be the best first half of the year for the Tigers. And he said, oh, good for them. <laughs> on the hook shot and a traveling violation. So the timing is even on when yes. he's off. Classic <laughs> deadpan. Beat. Oh, good for them. 33 to 16. The guy is just a seamless pool. And he is locked into this game and locked into his son's career. Wonderful thing that if you come and watch your work, that'll go on trap of the Tigers. He picks up the foul. That'll be number two on Clyde Trap. And they continue to howl here at Clemson. Tell you the crowd doesn't like it. Going back to Luke Murray. I mean, yes, we know Bill is a star, but Luke is a rising star on this bench with Louisville. Spent some time at Xavier as well. He's gonna be a head guy really, really soon in this college game. A lot of people say that. Crowd likes that one, 17.45 to go. Louisville coming in, the number five team in the country and leading the ACC by half a game over the Blue Devils of Duke. Well, B, Louisville's not connected. And that's a term you'll hear a lot of players and coaches use because it means everybody's on the same page. A lot of individuals out there not playing with each other, hence those unforced errors like you just saw in the pre prior sequence. Jemison powering his way in for two, just off the bench, and he delivers. Well, the Tigers points off turnovers 
13 to nothing over the Cardinals. Jemison averages 1.8 points per game. For him to take you off the bounce from the elbow, inexcusable. Well, who will rise up and save the Louisville Cardinals today? On the road in the ACC, will it be the number one scorer in the conference, Jordan Wara? Sutton on the back down, flips it up. Wara keeps it alive. Right back in there, strong, no foul. Sutton gets it. Boy, a lot of contact, no whistles. Whole lot of contact. Not really letting them play there. Dawes, shot clock down to 12. Newman, it's such a good first half. Now Perry wants to run, wants to drive it hard. A little out of control though. And a foul is 16-21 showing. Or is a first team all-conference guy. He hasn't been that in the last three halves of basketball. This guy should get a whistle. He's fighting here on a rebound. I mean, got mobbed right there from Jemison, the big at seven foot so when the contact comes it's hard to miss coach Mack didn't like it and I gotta agree Dwayne said with his second foul for Louisville a moment ago Doswell launched that one way downtown to no Kimball fires and hits the mid range jumper they need a lot more of that. 35-18 Tigers. It's not like Clemson is scoring at a remarkable clip. If Louisville can continue to get some stops, find some sort of rhythm offensively, and very easily climb back into this. Freshman Dawes with a kick out. Back. Jumper on the way. Nothing but net. Trap just buried it. Just 28% for the year from long distance, but this one builds their largest lead of the day. 38 to 18. Williams trying to answer, and a whistle. He hit the deck hard. On the foul, about 15 minutes to go. Very good ball movement here a moment ago. Sharing that thing, putting pressure on that defense, making him shifty the drive from Dawes. Then it's chaos defensively. Everybody out of place. Clyde Trap, punctuation. Clemson on top, 38 to 18, their biggest lead this afternoon against number five Louisville. As we check out the ACC standings, Florida State has already picked up a big win today against Syracuse. Yeah, and OB, there's a distinct upper class, and it consists of three teams in this conference. Virginia is kind of just on the outside, but a tournament team, so that puts them in that second tier pretty much alone right now. Then it becomes NC State, Syracuse, Notre Dame as those three what are they going to do, teams, to get this conference potentially a fifth tournament team? Syracuse missed an opportunity today. Notre Dame is currently involved in one versus Duke. That could be a heck of an opportunity. Yeah, they're down 14. And it looks like that opportunity is starting to dwindle away a little bit. I know that hurts you a little bit. <laughs> you fighting Irish, you but you know if that score holds up and this one holds up, Duke goes into the lead in the ACC by half a game in first place. Huge. Tigers with the ball. Mack lost control of it, got it back. Newman to the paint, got airborne, took the hit. And that foul on Malik Williams. Number two on Williams. And that'll put Newman back to the line. He didn't miss a shot in the first half and led all scorers with 11. And it was the first one good. Tuesday night, we'll be in Tallahassee. It's number eight FSU hosting Pittsburgh at 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on the ACC Network. FSU, of course, in the hunt for the ACC Championship. Just behind the Ville and Duke. Sucks. 
scoop shot. He's got it. Wayne Sutton, the senior. Wayne Sutton. And one of the better rebounders in the conference. Louisville had a ton of offensive rebounds in the first half, but just couldn't connect on the first or the second shot. And that's going back to that bend-don't-break mentality of this Clemson defense. Yes, they've given it up, but ultimately they've recovered to defend and get that rebound that is necessary to run. Boy, Matt showing some strength there. A little bit of contact. Didn't bother him a bit as he knocked it down. Mack is so much more efficient inside the arc. With his frame at 6'6 and the muscle on him, he does much more damage to a defense when he's probing dribbles and attacking. Williams calling for it. Perfect spot. Knocks it in. Williams, a guy who can be huge on the glass. Had a 13 rebounding game against Boston College. Three other times in his career. 13. Dawes thought about it. Trapped. Back in that 2-3 zone. It gave him some life in the second half for Storage Attack. Not the win, but shifting defense is now in the focus. Trap. Air Mills that one, and it goes out of bounds. It's Evan Mack, 6-6 grad on the move. He loves the big stage against this zone. Doesn't take a lot sometimes on those drives. You don't have to get all the way to the rim, but if you get just a little bit into it, there are gaps to exploit. And Mack takes advantage. A lot of experience with him. Two years at Texas, then a year at Alabama. Good position again, and Williams has two more. It's all day. Malik with five. Tigers and timeout. Tigers don't like the look of it. That's been a little too easy. A couple trips down the court for Williams. So Clemson with a 42-25 advantage. Malik Williams down low. Recovery too late from Mack. The big fella makes some pay. Our next Thursday night women's basketball doubleheader has Syracuse taking on Clemson. That's inside the Carrier Dome at 6 o'clock Eastern time. The number four NC State. At Coral Gables battling Miami. Wolfpack, by the way, tied for first in the ACC with Louisville. Jordan Cornett, Dave O'Brien, and Katie George with you here from Little John Coliseum at Clemson, where the Tigers are loving life here this afternoon on top 42 to 25. Alex Hemingway, 6'3 freshman, back on the floor here for the Tigers. Trapp gave it up, nearly threw it away. Trapp will swing it with a shot clock down to five. Newman to operate on Warren. Hemingway around and out right at the horn. Boy, was in the cylinder and kicked out. And on the drive, Sutton makes him pay. Great, great look from Johnson. I don't know how that ball got in there for him to get the finish. But getting out and running, speeding this one up a little bit. Got to continue to lock in and go. Wayne Sutton, by the way, has a dozen points for the Cardinals, so he's been a bright spot today. They haven't had enough. Tyson goes sprawling for that. And a foul with eight seconds on the shot clock. That's on Sutton. He can't believe it. Well, there's an effort there from Sutton. He did dive at the loose ball officials believe that there is more body than ball on the dive here's one that you thought was down from Hemingway Johnson knows what to do with the threads the needle beautifully in stride and Sutton gets one in the open floor Louisville needs more of those twelve minutes to play here at Clemson Tyson looking inside. Tipped away. We'll stay right here with 11.50 left. And only three on the shot clock as we go to the timeout. Well, the big story when we came on from Clemson today was that Jordan Wara, the ACC's leading scorer for the first time this season, did not start. And so far today, he has not scored a point. And Jordan... That means in his last two games, he has exactly two points. It's unbelievable. 
I mean, young man's played 20 minutes in this game, so as much as you want to read into him not starting, that ain't really the factor. That was his coach trying to motivate his guy in a way. He's still getting those minutes, but he's inside his head in a big way right now. He hasn't been in attack mode, but he also been too much dribbling and not moving, trusting that it's going to come back to him. There has been some fight on some offensive rebounds and some defensive stances, so I'll give him some credit there, but it's not coming easy. Sims on the dribble, and he held on to it too long. That shot no good. It's a shot clock violation. I mean, coming out of the timeout, that's unacceptable. Yeah, you knew how much time you had. I think he believed that he could get off comfortably that amount of dribbles and deliver, and they're going to take a look to make sure it's a shot clock violation. Should be a quick decision. 42-27, the Tigers came out roaring today and played so well in every phase. Take a look with a clock in the lower left. Two, jump stop. Ball's clearly still in his hands. The red light on the shot clock is what you're looking for there. Quick decision for Mark Snow. We're ready to get back in play. Turnover's pretty low. That's not been a big story today. The attack Johnson. That's a pretty play. He's done that a couple of times today. He's our best playmaker. You got to do more off the bounce and attack this defense, especially with how stagnant this offense has been this afternoon. Trapped from the corner. Too strong. This thing is beginning to tilt in Louisville's favor. They're on an 8 nothing run. Jordan. As bad as it's looked, it's only 13 with a whole lot of time left, OB. Entry pass. That's a tough shot. He knocked the two, and here come the Cardinals. 42 to 31. A 10 nothing stretch. Lobos made seven consecutive shots. First half, they were as cold as could be. Sims really wants it down low in this matchup versus Eno. Sims lost command of it. Big battle for the rebound. Great job in traffic by Newman to get that back. He's only 6'5". Blew Sutton off of that ball to come back when Enoch tried to shot block. Ball hit the floor underneath the goal, and he still was able to gather and finish. Laura McMahon with a three. Sutton with a second effort. Sutton's been fighting, and he's been productive. Well, he really wants it. Terrific move, and off the iron will be at the line. Foul on the play by Hunter Tyson. I'll tell you, David Johnson off the bounce, patient, patient. Goes down low to Enoch. Little spin move and finish. And on the other end, and Sims demanded this basketball, tried to respond with his own. Newman blows Sutton off the ball, which you rarely see, and gets the finish. Sutton at the line, makes 70% there. Now the Cardinals with victories over then number four Michigan. Third ranked Duke. Losses to Texas Tech, the national runner up. Also to Kentucky and to number 18 at the time, FSU. Today fighting for their lives against an unranked opponent. And the Clemson Tigers who are at 500 but has some really nice wins against ranked opponents themselves. Newman swings for Sims. Got doubled up, gave it away. McMahon around the back of that pass is Sutton all the way through for two. McMahon found a man open around the back. That was a thing of beauty. And the spin to win allowing the run out there for Sutton. Big time play from McMahon. Well, don't look now, but the Cardinals are right back in the game. They are down 10. And looking for another stop. Under 10 minutes to go here at Clemson. Mack with a fall away. Yes! Two-pointer. Kevin Mack with a basket. That's just a tough shot. Louisville's done a good job of taking away drive. Sutton makes him meet the chest, fades away, and hits a tough one from the baseline. McMahon picking up his dribble. There's Johnson. David Johnson, freshman from Louisville. Sutton strong again, but no. And the Tigers will have it back to that pass by McMahon. 
All-Star weekend and an All-Star move. First, it starts with the defense. Active hand from Sutton. The spinning, no-look lead-out pass, and Sutton knows what to do with it. Or that zone here. Got to establish Mack on the, in the inside and in that mid-post there. Sims. Yes! The three. Well, the Tigers showing no fear. Took a punch. Big-time response. Wara, no. One and done. See, Wara's got no rhythm. And then you're going to try and force one from there. That's not going to do you any service. And a foul against the Louisville Cardinals off the ball. That will go against the big Enoch with a shove number two. And that is unnecessary as it gets you closer towards the bonus for Clemson and earns Enoch a spot on a bench. And then they'll go a little smaller and bring on the 6'2 junior Darius Perry. Sutton also getting a break. Now Louisville had gotten it down to 10. And now the Tigers on top, 49-34, and the ball. Newman will fire the three! That's how the game started for the Tigers. Hitting a couple of threes, and that's how they got rolling. Traffic that'll be up and in the basket by Malik Williams, the 6'11 junior. And the Cardinals have been unable to establish a hot hand throughout the day. Tigers have had a couple of guys, Newman in particular, 18. That's a career high. Sims to the paint. Lily by shot there. He did not have command. Perry. And a three-point bombardier from the corner, no. And a lot of that today for the Cardinals. Jordan, one shot, that's it. And, and for a championship-caliber team like the Cards are, you must find ways to carve out wins when you shoot poorly from three. Entirely too much talent that goes nine deep. Three for 20. Evan Way, yes. Well, the freshman would miss 16 games to a high ankle sprain, but when he plays, he makes an impact. Getting loud again at Little John. 55 36 Tigers. Kelsey and Luke, thank you very much. Tigers in command here, 55 to 36. Tony Bennett continues to be a wizard for Virginia. And the way the Tigers started shooting the basketball in the opening minutes, they've actually carried that through. And here in the second half, Jordan, from three-point distance, four for nine. Four for nine, and that was the, the, the turning point, because we felt like sitting here courtside, here comes Louisville, they're on a run. When you bang down those three threes, put all that to rest, and it's a sincere uphill climb now for the Cardinals. Big man from three. Cuts into that lead a little bit here, coming up on six and a half to go. That simply puts the Cardinals at four of 21 from beyond the arc right now. Sims on a high post, back to Dawes. Hemingway back for Sims. Five to shoot here. Dawes gave it up. And the jump shot by Newman won't drop. Six minutes to play. Sutton back in. Here's Johnson. The triple no. A second effort. Williams with the feed and a whistle. Foul on Newman. Good fight there from Williams to generate a second chance opportunity. 
patient after the rebound and finds his guy Sutton who has continued to fight this entire afternoon for Louisville. So Dwayne Sutton at the line. He has scored over a thousand points in his career. And nothing but net coming up every Sunday. Our weekly basketball studio show. Tomorrow's show at 8 Eastern. Right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And Sutton with another one coming. Outstanding rebounder, number six in the conference. So we'll try to figure out with nothing but that who's the primary ball handler. Is it Kelsey Riggs? Is it Dallin Cuff? We know who the scoring comes from in the interior of Boozer. And obviously, Luke, the shooter. I think, unfortunately, you have really overanalyzed that show. <laughs> Much to your discredit. 5.38 to go. But you do what you have to do. I know you, you work with that fine group of people all the time. <laughs> they do tremendous work. Hemingway fumbles that one, but sipped out of play by the Cardinals off the hands of Darius Perry. 15-point lead. Look at Louisville here with just 40 points with five and a half minutes to go. The season low is 57 per game. And that was against Texas Tech. Again, they had only 14 in the first half. And as the Tigers will turn it over. It's a big possession for Louisville. 15-point game. You want to see what you can do before the last media timeout. Under four. Jordan Wara on the bench. What can David Johnson running this team do? Wara still has not scored today. Williams up to set the screen for Johnson. Taking 50% of his shots in the last nine games, but that one will not roll in. They'll get it back, 5 or 7 to go. It's a good look. I mean, that's getting all the way to the rim. You don't draw the contact. You just miss the bunny. Isn't that kind of dead? And a play inside and a quick strike by Sutton. 55-42. Yep, still time here for the Cardinals. Several opportunities today for the Tigers to put them out of their misery. Hemingway will launch and hit it. He's got a triple. Shot has been so important for a team that has not shot it well from three point land all season long. Rebound kicked around loose. Big sprawling play by Perry. Got it free to McMahon. He'll step back. Can't hit it. Rebounded away by Trout. The second half three point shooting of the Clemson Tigers has been the difference. Newman to the paint. Off the window and one. He'll go to the line. Sutton with the foul picks up his fourth. And every time it looks like Louisville is going to get back into the thing, something like this happens. That's a big time play with the off hand to finish that. That's a lefty getting it done. That's a big time play through contact. He has 20. Newman looking to add to that at the foul line and does. Newman with 21. McMahon trying to bring them back, and that is certainly not out of his range. And a timeout, Louisville. 3.56 to go. 61 45. Clemson. Is he Seinfeld's nemesis or is he Louisville's nemesis? Newman, one thing we know for certain, this one John Newman has been all night like a set of porch lights. He's done it at all three levels. From deep, he's gotten to the rim and he's even hit the mid-range. And he's done it time and time again. The most consistent and viable scoring option for the Tigers has made great strides this season and has been an impact guy. That's why Clemson sits up top now for the 16-point cushion. Today's player of the game brought to you by Zaxby's. 
John Newman came in averaging nine points a game, but he's blown up today for 21. And he's excelled in some big-time games. He had 17 against North Carolina. He had 16 against Colorado. And the sophomore on point, six for eight. And six rebounds as well for the Tigers. That defining stretch of three games that got them into the middle of the pack for the ACC. Uh, those were games where John Newman delivered as a double-figure scorer. NC State, North Carolina, and Duke all wins. And he was a big factor in it as well as Tevin Mack who once again has knocked double figures, 14 of his own, in some timely shots. Tigers breaking the press. Sixty-one forty-five, Clemson. On a huge sports weekend on this campus. Shot clock down to eight, blocked away by McMahon to trigger a fast break opportunity for Wara, who still has not scored. He's fouling the play. And he'll shoot a one and one so here's his opportunity to finally get into the scoring column the top scorer in the ACC with 329 to go and it's been a goose egg day if you're wondering if it's been limited minutes if it's been foul trouble it's been either 25 minutes nearly 26 he's played uh, point number one Preseason ACC Player of the Year, 1,000-point scorer. Had some great games this season, 37 against Boston College. Had 32 against FSU. He's his first two here this afternoon. And this is arguably the best score in his conference. The dip he's taking, he's got a lot of people scratching their heads. you got to find ways to generate easy ones when the shot's not falling. David Johnson with the foul for the Cardinals. David Johnson, his first. Grab an offensive rebound, get in the post, get a run out. Clyde trap in the line. Clyde trap to shoot. Now that's a struggle for him, only 44%. At the foul line for the sophomore from Eastover, South Carolina. 3.18 to go. The Cardinals needing all the help they can get here. They can try and climb back in it. Williams off the fake, and it's stuffed right back in his face. And the Tigers buckling down on the interior. Chris Mack thought for sure there was a foul there. A lot of contact. Williams got the defender up with the head fake. No whistle. Let the play through. Two fifty-three to go. Let's go back and take another look. They got a foul here on Malik Williams, but how about on the rejection? Johnson does a great job making the defense commitment a dump off. I don't know how that's not a foul. There's two different guys that qualify. Amir Sanders in the line, one and one on the, the business of reading lips over here, thankfully. <laughs> Sims at the line. We don't have to because we're only about six feet from the Louisville bench. We're right in the, they in the all mess. came up on that one. Sims knocks it in. He made 74%. Looking pretty strong coming back from the flu. He lost about eight or nine pounds. I don't recommend that as far as the weight loss program is concerned, but the rest of us tend to get it back very quickly. <laughs> yeah, if I got that flu, I'd spend no time getting it right back that way. <laughs> You're not alone, my friend. 63-47. Sims with another double-figure scoring game. He's at 18 of them this year. Johnson with an answer on the other end, 63-49. And certainly Louisville cannot be trading baskets at this point. Sims a reach and foul by Johnson. Right at midcourt. And time for the Tigers to shoot another one-and-one. One. It'll be Sims marching to the line. As mentioned, a completely different story when they met a few weeks ago at Louisville. The Cardinals, they were the red hot team. They made 66% in the first half, ran away with it 80 to 62. Johnson pounding to the paint and drops into. When he wants to get to that rim, OB, nobody can stop. David Johnson, much like a Georgia Tech in the waiting moments before he fouled out. It was the David Johnson clear out kick to the rim show. 
Clemson's got to make these free throws. They're in the bonus. The more they miss, the more it opens up an opportunity for the Cardinals to climb back. Well, Jordan Wara, the 6'8 junior from Buffalo, New York, who's had an outstanding junior year, but he has not had a good day. He's gotten completely out of the rhythm that we've seen him be in all season long. Look, he's not a guy that just can give him the ball and say, go create your own shot. He's got a great looking stroke, but usually it comes through movement. Out of the gates in this with too much dribbling, standing still, allowing the defense to get in passing lanes, turn him over. He's a tentative guy by nature. It, it's who he is. He's a very respectful young man. He's not the loudest voice. He's not really an edgy, brash competitor. So sometimes you need to pull that stuff out of him. And in turbulent times here as of late, he's gone quiet. I mean, that's just the reality of it. He's one of the brightest stars in college basketball that has been a non-factor for heavy stretches of games. And this now these last two games, which could be losses, you got to look at the spotlight on your main guy and wonder what's going on. That's two points and a loss earlier this week, just two today. Has not hit a field goal, 0 for 4. Been in and out of the lineup, did not start today. He came off the bench, he did start the second half. We have 2.24 left. And Louisville again, pulling to within 12 points. They've gotten it down to 10 in the second half. Unable to get any closer than that, they press again. And Kimball with a foul. And again, putting the Tigers at the line here in the final minutes. That was called on Lamar Kimball, his first 10th team foul. So Trapp will be shooting two here. By Trapp, shooting two. Tigers as a team make 67%. In and out, he'll have another one coming. Yep, Pitt and Virginia Tech coming your way as soon as we're done here at Little John this afternoon. You gotta imagine make or miss here. It's gonna be a flat look. And David Johnson breaking down off the dribble once again. Also a dribble kick, dribble drive, find a shooter. Shooter might be number 30. It's McMahon. Here it comes. He didn't touch anything. Got about two minutes to go. Sims putting it to the deck as he is fouled before he got to half court. Down 33. On Jordan Wara. Number three on Wara. Got a good look. I mean, you, you, you got a couple probing dribbles from your guard and Johnson. McMahon gets a clean one. His struggles continue from three, two of eight from distance. Sims, 74%. He actually shot them pretty well today, but down the stretch here, Cardinals are relying on them not to make it. They try and creep back in this thing. Number two for Sims. Got that one. Johnson pushing it. And a foul. 2.02 to go. And a shove there by Clyde Trapp. His that third. Was on Clyde Trapp. That's his third. 10 15 foul. David Johnson. So Johnson to the line. David, the freshman, hometown kid from Louisville, makes 63%. As a team, Louisville is typically going to win that battle at the line over a team like Clemson. They're a very good foul shooting team, 74%. Had a game earlier this year against Virginia where they made 21 out of 24. And all of those came in the second half. Sixty-five to fifty-three. More pressure. Dawes shoved from behind by McMahon. So that's what it's become here down the stretch. A foul shooting contest. Bora back on the bench. And he, he's standing up because you never know when his numbers will be called back in here for offense. It's almost offense, defense, subs. Dawes shoots two. 
Alamir Dawes, freshman out of Newark, New Jersey. He's a top 100 ESPN prospect. Choosing Clemson over St. John's, Seton Hall, and UConn. His first point today. Really had a fine game and a victory at Pitt. He had 18 points, 17 in the second half as Wara is back in. Well, he's coming of age. He's, he's a freshman. He's a young guy, but at this point in the season, you're no longer a freshman. You become a, a sophomore for the team that tasked with running that point guard position. You'll experience growing pains. Now Brad Barnell was raving about him in their workout today. He said he plays with great competitive spirit. Wara with a three. Under two minutes to go. Foul, 148 left. Wara stopping the clock. So Louisville has it down to 11. Look, it, it, it might not result in a win for Louisville as it looks like with the current situation, but seeing the ball go in the basket for how much he's been struggling these last two games, it's something. The three pointer was his first field goal today. Dawes looks pretty comfortable at the line. And another one on the way for the freshman. One of the better on the ball defenders, too, for the Tigers. Makes the pair. Quickly inside. Williams is blocked from behind, but it comes free for the basket. As Johnson was there in the paint to finish that one up. 36 to go. And the foul will go on Fresh Kimball. Number two. Right here, not giving up on a play is Newman. Right behind it for the follow-up. Didn't see enough contact right there. Looked like it was more ball than hand. Quick look. Bang, bang play, but Louisville's able to respond with finish of their own. So trapped back to the line. And again, he's probably the worst foul shooter on the floor for the Tigers, but drills the first one. And as a team, they're making 80% today. This floor against top ACC opponents this season has been really good to the Tigers. Yeah, nothing but net on those, 71 to 58. Driving right through Johnson, two more for him. On the run out, Newman, he slams it! <laughs> 73 to 60. Newman with the most electrifying basket of the day. That caps off what has been a big time performance. As he gets the lead count, I don't know about Newman the first or second, but the third has some buddies, ladies and gentlemen. That elevator, OB, it goes to a different floor, and the fans are losing themselves. <laughs> well, he's been terrific today, 23 points, 7 out of 9, perfect at the foul line. He's been good on the glass, too. Yeah, and he's done it, and that's the kind of thing you need. When you got a top five opponent coming in, and you expected that top five opponent who just lost to unranked Georgia Tech to come out here and play inspired ball, well, you need everybody. And Clemson has got it from a variety of different guys. It hasn't been what we expected to be the Amir Sim show. No, it's been Mac. It's been Newman. Hemingway has made some big shots as he's found great rhythm here in the last few games. Four guys in double figures for Clemson. They've achieved balance, and it's made them tough to guard this afternoon. Well, a month ago, they knocked off number three, Duke. Trying to knock off the number five, Louisville Cardinals. Last time they beat two top fives with the 79-80 season here at Clemson. Williams in the paint. A finger roll for two. Still a minute 12 remaining. 73 to 62. I always love the delay of game warning because then it lets you delay get even more set. <laughs> they call out the delay of game warning. In for Sims. And an 
a whistle. And a foul on Fresh Kimball. Not much time, just two seconds coming off the clock there. And Sims back to the foul line. Amir Sims, the junior from Virginia. And very big in Clemson's historic win over North Carolina. So he had 20 points, eight rebounds, four blocks, six assists, and three steals. It's the kind of performer he is for this team, a unique piece that allows Coach Brunel to use him in a lot of different places, but defensively versatile as well. That stat line speaks to it. That's the way the game has been going for the Cardinals. Laura giving it up. The roar of the crowd here, Little John. Bit of an embarrassing play there. And now the looks on the faces tell the story. This team has hit a wall here in February. And I, knowing who Coach Mack is and knowing the talent on this roster, there'll be a bounce back. But for right now, there's a little bit of confusion and disarray. A disconnected squad, and it's showing in these last two conference games. Sims with a kick. Dawes. Got it. He hits the three. Chris Mack said loud enough for us to hear it. No more fouls, fellas. Off the window and snatched away. Mack reminding his team this one is in the books for the Clemson Tigers. They have earned it today. And they love it at Little John. All right, it's incredibly interesting. Amir Sims plays versus the Irish. Maybe that's a win, and you're looking at a 500 team in conference and it's being discussed in a different manner. One thing for certain, these Tigers came to play. Hustle, effort, physicality, and when they needed it, execution. Shot clock buzzing there, still 10 seconds to go. 77 to 62. The Blue Devils with a win today. They're coming out of court, OB. And Louisville going down to the feet. Here come the students. Ladies and gentlemen, final score. And Clemson wins it. 77 to 62. What a week they've had. Great win against Pitt, a better one today. Yeah, something about playing here at home. Louisville's got to go home, figure it out, learn how to win when the shots aren't falling. Clemson came to play today. They deserve this celebration, OB. Clemson knocking off Louisville 77 to 62. Pitt and Virginia Tech coming up in just a moment. So long from Clemson. Thanks for watching, everybody.